Hey everybody, Brandon here from Cat Intentions, and in today's video, we're taking a look at the Express tools in AutoCAD. In particular, I'm going to be sharing five of my favorites, as well as a couple quick tips and tricks along the way. Let's jump right into today's video, and if you haven't used these Express tools, I'm sure they're going to save you a ton of time. All right, so first up, if you haven't used them before, the Express tools in AutoCAD are available in the full version of AutoCAD and above any of the other verticals like Civil 3D. These Express tools can be accessed on the ribbon up top under the Express tools tab. If you don't see the Express tools up on the top of the ribbon here, you can type in Express tools in the command line and hit enter and that should activate it for you if it's available in your install. Now, once you've got to this ribbon here, you'll see there are a ton of different tools tools and in today's video I'm going to show you just five of my favorites and some that I think will save a lot of people time and are most commonly overlooked or unknown. Uh, to start off we're going to go with one called replace block it's up here on the top left or you can type in replace block to activate that command. What this is going to do is allow you to replace any block within the drawing with another block. Now this can be a huge time saver if plans change or a revision comes up and you'd like to swap out an object. This could be anything from trees and plants for landscape plans or chairs or desks in architectural or it could be something more complicated like in a civil design it could be a manhole type or a uh, catch basin style. So what you're going to want to do is activate the command by clicking it up here on the express tools or typing in replace block to get started. It's going to ask you for the block name that you want to replace. Now, if you don't know that you can simply click on any of the blocks that you want to replace and go to the properties menu here and you can see the name of that block down here in the name field. So you can see chair seven is the one we want to replace. So again, we're going to click that replace block command to bring it up. We're going to select chair seven and hit OK. Now it's going to ask which block we'd like to replace it with. And this is the great part. It's going to replace this block throughout the entire drawing while keeping all of the uh, settings and attributes the same. So we're going to swap it out for chair two, which has no arms, and we're going to hit OK. At the bottom here in the command line, it's going to ask if you'd like to purge the unreferenced items when finished. So when it replaces all of the chair sevens, do you want those blocks completely removed from the drawing or do you just want to leave it there? It's going to replace them in the drawing, but you're still going to have that uh, chair seven block in the drawing if you hit no or type N here. So I'm going to type N just to leave our block in the drawing for the example. But if you hit yes, that's fine too. It's just going to wipe that block out of your drawing. You can always bring it back in later from your block library. We're going to hit N for a no and hit enter. And you can see all of my chairs, no matter which direction they're facing, now have the arms removed. And if you select one, they are now the chair two block. So all of them throughout the entire drawing have been replaced in literally two clicks. We've selected the original and selected the replacement and hit OK. Now they're all gone and swapped out and cleaned from the drawing. All right, so moving along to the next tip or express tool here has to do with blocks again. This one is called block to xref and while the naming is a little bit confusing, what this is going to allow you to do is fix or replace a block with an xref. So if you'd like to clean up your drawing, this is a great way to do that. Or if you've inserted or bound an xref previously. So you can see here in my xrefs list, I don't have any xrefs, just our initial office plan drawing. But if I select the office walls here and go to the properties, you'll see this is a block reference from an xref x underscore office walls. So if I want to reinstate or replace this block with the original xref, I can use this command. Or if you have any block within your drawing that you'd like to swap out to be an xref, this is a great way to clean up that drawing. So if you say had walls and you want to export those, put them into an xref and now replace your walls block, this is how we're going to do it. So under the blocks flyout or drop down up in the corner here, we're going to convert block to an xref and it's going to activate that block to xref command. It's going to ask me which block would I like to replace with an xref and I know it's called x office walls. We're going to hit OK 
and it's going to ask me to find the drawing I'd like to replace it with. I know that this office walls drawing here is the one I'd like to use, so I'm going to hit open, and it's going to ask again if I'd like to purge the old items. This time we're going to leave it with yes and hit enter. You're going to see it do its thing here, and then in a second you're going to see that my xref has now returned, and it's been replaced in my drawing. You can see I now have the office walls xref. Nothing in my drawing has changed except that block has now been flipped out and replaced with an XREF. So this one, while maybe not used as often as the other one, is a super time saver when it does come in handy. So it's one that I highly recommend knowing and understanding that it's available, but it may not be one that you use in your day to day. Next up though, maybe one that you use a lot more often, and that is called the align space command. So you can see here, I've got my viewport, and if we double click in and move our drawing around, you can see I've got this box here, and I would like to align my viewport and my model space to this box. Now what you can do is zoom in and out, and you can try and get it pretty close, but it's tough to get it exact, and sometimes you want to reference two points to the corners of your viewport. You can also reference and align your model space to anything that's in the paper space. So say you've got some text or dimensions and you've accidentally moved your layout at any time, or you just like to scale and match it to a dimension within your paper space. There are unlimited uses for this command and I'm going to show you how to use it. So up along the top here, you're going to click the align space command and it's going to put you into model space if you're not already. And it's going to ask you for the first point in model space that you'd like to align to your paper space. This will make more sense once we go through the example. So I'm going to pick this top left corner and it's going to ask me for a second point or you can just hit none and enter or just enter uh, to go straight to the next point in paper space or you can choose two points in model space which is what we're going to do. We're going to choose the two corners. So I've got the upper left one selected and now I'm going to choose the bottom right one. And now it's going to flip over to paper space and it's going to ask me where that first point should go. Well, I know I want it in the corner of my purple viewport here. And it's going to ask me where the second point should go. And I know I want it in the corner of this viewport here. It's going to automatically scale and move my model space to match so that model space and paper space match perfectly to those two points. Now, double clicking out of my viewport, I'm going to now lock this. So I'm going to hit the lock button and now I can't accidentally move it around. This is great if you've got multiple sheets or pages and you want them all to be perfectly matched up in your viewports, you can create that box uh, that you want everyone to match with and simply doing those two clicks is going to align the paper space and model space perfectly between those two clicks. Now, before we move on to the next great express tool that's going to save you time, if you haven't already, I highly recommend checking out my AutoCAD Fundamentals and Workflows course. It's packed full of everything AutoCAD that I've learned in over 15 years of using it daily. Everything from creating drawing templates, inserting layers, layer styles, customizing them, uh, inserting XREF, setting up drawings, annotative text, dimensions, labels, layout spaces, paper spaces, uh, plotting and exporting drawings, and a ton more. It's going to save you hundreds of hours over the course of your career, and it's guaranteed to save you time. If you haven't already, I highly recommend checking it out. You can get it at the link up above and down below, and it's discounted for viewers such as yourself using those links. Thanks again for watching and let's jump right into the next tip. All right, so next up is a pair of commands and it's kind of a two in one to save you time when it comes to labeling and numbering, say text or grid lines within your drawing. This also works for uh, notes and call outs. It's a great way to save you a ton of time. So I'm gonna show you the auto number command first. So you can see I've got all these example pieces of text. These are just simple M text or D text. It doesn't matter. They're just text within your drawing. I'm going to click the auto number command here and it's going to just ask me which objects I'd like to number. I'm just going to select them all and hit enter. Now it's going to select or ask me how I would like to sort those objects. So you can sort them by X or Y. So Y is going to go top to bottom, X is going to go left to right, or you can simply click select order and it's going to let you, uh, or it's going to number them in the order that you selected them. Uh, we're going to use the Y 
top to bottom because that just makes sense. Typically you're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to hit Y and it's going to ask you the starting number and the increment. So you're going to want to start at one typically. But if you've already got a few numbers and you want to start at three, that's going to be your first number. And then you're going to hit comma and use the increment. If you want to count by twos, you would put two. If you want to count by one, you're going to hit one and so forth, fives, tens. So we're going to use the default one comma one. So we're going to start at one and increase by one hitting enter it's going to now ask me where i would like to replace these numbers so you could do a find and replace which maybe you put in a single character that's going to be your number like an x or a pound sign or you can overwrite the entire piece of text you can add it as a prefix which would be at the start of the text string or as the suffix which would be at the end in our case we want the prefix we want just to number the start of our uh, labels here so we're going to use prefix and you're going to see that it's now automatically added our numbers to our descriptions. This is number one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. This is a great way to save time for a number of different use cases, whether it's in notes and labels or within the drawing itself, maybe room numbering. This is a great way to automate something that can be pretty repetitive and slow, especially if you're working with a ton of pieces of text. There is no real limit to this, so it can save you a ton of time. Now, the second part of this command, we're going to go into model space and I'm going to automate uh, numbering these grid lines. So you can see right now, each grid line just has a pound sign. So we're gonna auto number these using that same thing. We're going to select all of them along the top here and hit enter. We're gonna use the X, so we're gonna go left to right uh, as the sorting and we're gonna use one and one again. Uh, so we're gonna hit enter. This time we want it to be the suffix. So we want it to be pound sign and then a number and it's going to auto number those. So that's the first part of this tip. Uh, the second part is that there is also an enclose in object. So this is going to draw our grid circle automatically around each of our grid numbers. Clicking that command up top is going to ask me to select all of my objects. So we're gonna zoom out select each of our numbers for the grid and hit enter. It's gonna ask you an offset distance factor. So this is the distance in whatever units you're using that you want the circle to be offset from the text. I've got mine set to 0.5. You can play around with this, try it a few times to make sure you've got the right distance for the size of text and scale that you're working with. We're gonna hit enter to use that 0.5 and it's going to ask, would you like to enclose your text with a circle, a slot, a rectangle. Uh, we're gonna stick with circles, but you can play with these settings and see the different results. Now, the last one here can be important. For grid lines, you're gonna want this circle to be the same size for every grid. That way it doesn't look different or weird when you're looking across the top. So it's gonna find out what size circle it needs to be to encompass your text for all of your uh, numbers. Now, if you don't care about the size circle, maybe you're or you're using a rectangle and you just want it to encapsulate all of the text regardless of the size and it can be bigger or smaller, you're gonna use variable as the option here. But for our case, we're gonna use constant. So you can click that or hit enter and you can see it's now automatically added circles at a 0.5 buffer around all of our text for each grid line. Now you can see this just saved me, it could save you tens or 20, minutes depending on how many of these you've got you can do the same thing on the up and down and you can also customize that numbering like i mentioned so these are great ways to save time and automate a lot of things these can be used for callouts and labels as well there are a ton of use cases where you might want to enclose objects in circles rectangles or slots all right, so the last express tool we're gonna to share today. And if you guys like this video, don't forget to leave a comment down below and let me know. We can share more of these and I can show you how to use all of the different express tools in next videos. But for today, the last one we're gonna check out is the burst command. I talk about this one a lot because for some reason it's still pretty less known. Uh, compared to the explode command, which is not as useful. So you can see in our drawing here, we have these blocks. So I'm gonna select one and you can see in the properties, this is a block uh, called RM number. 
room number. So each of our rooms has this number block. You can double click on it to change the attribute. But what if you don't want these blocks anymore? Or if, what if you need to edit one or you want to break them up for some reason? This is a great way to do it. And that is using the burst command. So you can use the explode command, but I'll show you what that does. Many people use the explode command, but what it does is it breaks our block attributes. So if you type in explode and hit enter, you can see it just resets the text back to the default tag. So it's going to be the number of the room. Now I've got this just attribute and I've also now got a polygon or rectangle around it. So it breaks it up to its base pieces, but you lose that uh, attribute value in it. So there are a lot of reasons why you may need to burst or explode blocks within your drawings. Maybe you've inserted them and you want to change things or just a specific one or two customized, but you don't want to lose those attributes. Maybe you've got like uh, borehole numbers or room numbers or square uh, footage numbers, something inside of that block that you don't want to lose using the burst command. So we're going to select this block here, type in burst and hit enter. And you can see it's kept the attribute value. So that's all this is going to do is it's going to keep the attributes and values of your block while also exploding or breaking it into its individual parts. So I've got the polygon or rectangle here. I've also got a piece of text, but the value of this piece of text is now simply a text value of 6045. So you're not losing any of that value or data when you break these apart. This is a great thing to do if you're say sending out drawings, you don't want to send them your blocks, but you do need to send all the data and line work. So that's all for today's video. I hope these tips helped. As I mentioned, if you have any questions or you want to learn more, don't forget to comment down below and hit that like and subscribe button. And if you haven't already, don't forget to check out my AutoCAD workflows and fundamentals course discounted for viewers such as yourself by using the link up above or down below in the description. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Cheers.